On behalf of GE Healthcare, we'd like to welcome you. At GE, we strive to deliver leading-edge blended instruction through a compendium of training tools, and we trust this information will assist you and your peers down the learning path to clinical excellence. This video is one part of a comprehensive training package created to assist you in learning the MAC 5500 effectively and quickly. At the conclusion of this video, you will be able to navigate the MAC 5500 keyboard, properly prepare the patient and connect lead wires, enter patient and test information, acquire a standard 12 lead ECG and a rhythm strip and Manage the ECG files including printing, editing, and transmitting. Let's begin by reviewing the keyboard and other components you'll need to know for your quick start. We'll first look at the unit with the display screen closed. If you're using your Mac 5500 to follow along, we'll consider the area that holds the display as the front of the unit. Looking at the right side of the Mac 5500, we see two connection ports. The port to the left is the local area network, which allows the cart to connect to the Muse server through the network. This is a purchasable option on the Mac 5500 cart. The connection port to the right is an internal modem port, which is used to connect to the Muse server via an analog phone line. At the back of the Mac 5500, you'll find the AC power supply in the far right-hand corner. You can use the Mac 5500 in battery mode, however the cart should be plugged into a wall outlet or other AC power supply when not in use. To the left of the power supply is the secure digital card slot. This is where you can insert a secure digital card to copy or restore patient records. This can also be used for software updates. The remaining ports will be discussed in detail in the Operator's Manual and the Clinical Reference Guide for the Mac 5500. At the back left corner of the unit are indicator lights and the internal access button. The green light indicates the unit is plugged into AC power, like a wall outlet. An amber light next to the battery symbol indicates the battery is charging. When the battery is fully charged, no light shows in the display. Keep the battery charged because if it runs out of power during a procedure, you will lose your system setup information and ECG data. To open the unit so you can change the paper, place your finger on the internal access button and press down firmly. When the unit is open, you can also view the serial number and access the battery. To insert paper into the paper tray, simply set the pad in the empty paper tray, making sure the cue hole is in the upper left corner of the tray, which is the corner closest to the internal access button. Pull the top sheet partially out and hold it in place, then gently close the cover until it latches. The paper will advance when you acquire an ECG. Now we're ready to open the display screen and review the keypad, as well as some information you'll find on the display screen. The power button is located at the top right of the keypad. Simply press to power the machine on or off. On a side note, the power button on your system may be labeled off on rather than power. The software level is displayed at the upper left of the screen when the unit is first powered on. You'll need this number if calling technical support. When the machine is powered on, the display screen is set for acquiring an ECG. The screen displays the waveform, provides you with textual information about the test, and presents the data entry screens and menu selections. The battery icon in the upper right corner of the screen is an instant indicator of the battery's power status. Please refer to the operator's manual for more information on battery usage. This is the icon for a resting ECG. You'll see a different icon for other functions, such as pediatric ECGs or system setup and file manager functions. The three-circle indicator on the screen display is the hookup advisor, a tool that will help you monitor the quality of the ECG signal 
and in turn help eliminate poor technical quality ECGs, save time, and prevent the need for retakes. When the rightmost circle is green, the signal quality is acceptable. The leftmost circle will display red to indicate lead failure or extreme baseline shifts. A yellow circle in the middle indicates there is muscle artifact, power line interference, baseline wander, or electrode noise. When the lead quality is red or yellow, a message describing the lead problem or status will appear on the screen. Please refer to your operator's manual or clinical reference guide for directions on how to configure and enable the Hookup Advisor feature. The heart rate appears below the Hookup Advisor indicator, and the date and time is displayed in the middle of the screen. User prompts that appear at the top left of the screen step you through what to do next. The menu selections and functions available on your system appear along the bottom of the screen. Let's take a look at the keypad before reviewing the menu selections. You'll press the ECG key to begin acquiring a 12SL resting ECG, including measurements and interpretation. Press the copy key to print a duplicate copy of the ECG report you just printed. Press the rhythm key to print continuous ECG data. Keep in mind, however, the rhythm strip only prints. It can't be stored or transmitted. We'll revisit the ECG and rhythm keys in the section on acquiring an ECG. The stop key stops the writer from printing. You can use the arrow pad to move the display cursor to the left or right, up or down. Pressing directly in the center of the arrow pad selects a highlighted menu on the screen, as does the return or enter key. The space bar inserts a space between typed characters. You can use the space bar also to navigate through menu items on the display screen. Use the escape key to return to a previous menu. The clinical reference guide included in your training kit will show you how to work within the menu selections to set up your system. In this video session, we will review how to select and access menus and work with data fields. The menu selections on the screen correspond to the function keys directly under them on the keypad. To make a choice, press the function key beneath the menu item you want. We will review the F keys briefly. Press F2 to open the lead selection screen. When acquiring an ECG, you can select the leads here or change the selections that have been preset in system setup. Press F3 to change the rider speed. Press F4 to change waveform amplitudes. F5 allows you to easily change filter settings. F6 is labeled More, which will take you to two more selections. The Pace Gain, which is F1, allows you to enable the Pacemaker Enhancement function, which enhances or enlarges detected pacer spikes on the ECG for easier viewing. We recommend having pacemaker enhancement turned on only when an ECG is being taken on a patient with a known pacemaker. Pressing F2 will take you to the main menu, where you can select Resting ECG and return to the original screen. Please refer to your operator's manual and other educational offerings for further information about the main menu. Select F1 to open the Patient Data window and enter patient demographic information. To type in a free text field, place the cursor where you want to enter data. Type in the patient's last name. When finished typing, press the Enter key to add the data and move the cursor to the next data entry point. You can also use the arrow pad to move up and down in the window. Let's say I misspelled the last name and want to correct it. Press the up arrow on the arrow pad to return to the last name field. If you want to delete data from a field entirely, press the key marked with the X on the upper right of the keypad. Now let's enter the ID for the patient. Use the number keys to enter the unique ID number for the patient. In the date of birth field, first type the day. 
Then press Enter or the center of the arrow pad to enter the day and move to the next data entry point. Now select the month from the pick list. You can select from this list in two different ways. One way is to type the first letter of the item you want. For example, type S for September. September is now selected. Press Enter to enter the month and move to the next data entry point. In the Gender field, simply type in M for Male or F for Female and press Enter. Let's select Race using the second way to choose from a pick list. When you press Enter, the cursor moves to the first item in the list. Use the down or up arrow to select the item you want. When you've made your selection, press Enter again. Let's type in Chest Pain at the Test Indication field to give you practice using the spacebar. Finish by pressing Enter to enter the data and move to the next data entry point. Close Setup or Data Entry Windows by pressing the Enter key or the down arrow until you reach Return at the bottom of the window. Then press Enter. Pressing the Escape key will also close the window.